Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. Welcome. Today we're going to have a look at another of the Kingdoms of Harn. This is, as usual, a product from Columbia Games. Except this time, instead of looking through the electronic version, which is available in separate articles, as we've talked about before, um, this is a prototype, uh, which Columbia Games was kind enough to send me, or loan me at least, of the new Orball Kingdom hardback, which is, if all goes according to plan, currently on Kickstarter. I can't give you a page count on this because the articles are numbered individually, but it's probably about 140 pages. So, uh, again, prototype, we've seen, you know, some typos on some of these before. So if you see anything that looks particularly hilarious, uh, they, they should fix that before these things go to press. Um, again, check out the Kickstarter, which I will link in the video description. So before we get any further, let's open her up and take a look. Uh, nice, sturdy, it's, it's quite a square bound hardback. Uh, it feels pretty good in the hand. Um, and the, these do, especially together, look really nice on the shelf. Uh, and the paper quality is is really high. Again, prototype, you know, I hope the uh, print copy will be this nice, but the, the paper's really thick. All right, so writers, Joe Adams, Brent Bailey, Rob Barnes, Brian Clemens, Tom Doglish, Edwin King, Dave Cowan, and Richard Porter, and a whole bunch of other contributors. Uh, maps and plans, uh, looks like we got Brent Bailey... Odgir Drevdal, uh, Milo Hatch, Eric Hotz, who of course was one of the uh, classic Harn artists, illustrations by Richard Luschek, who is kind of the current uh, main Harn artist, um, and of course Eric Hotz. So we have the Orball political map. Now Orball is a very interesting place. It is it is kind of the uh, the Danelaw of Harn, if you will. The Orballese, some uh, generation or two ago, uh, kind of raided in here and settled and subjugated the local Jaren population, which has already rebelled multiple times, and a new rebellion is a Bruin. So uh, this, as usual with these kingdoms, is is rife with adventure seeds. And you can actually see... Uh, kind of, you know, how the, the, the fiefdoms break down. That's a little different. There are still a couple of old Jaren nobilities. The, the place used to be called Jara. Um, here is what we call the poetic map of Orball, which is a thing that if you were to print this and or photocopy it and on a, like a nice parchment paper and trim the edges off, this is this thing that you can, you can hand out to your players as their character's actual map inside the world. And all the kingdoms have these. Uh, this one looks particularly nice. So we have the Orball article itself. This is Orball the Kingdom, location at Northeastern Harn. You get the map coordinates. I really wish that Columbia Games would get moving on the rest of the Atlas maps. That would be great. Culture is feudal slash Viking. That's pretty much just descriptive as far as this article is concerned. But if you're using the Harn Master rules, then that actually does mean something. I would interpret it as the Jaren being feudal and the uh, the, the Orballese the, which are the Avinian invaders and conquerors, uh, being of the Viking uh, culture. Uh, royal seat is at Geldeheim, uh, and the largest town is Chiron, population 820. Um, these, these population figures for towns and settlements are very reasonable based on the medieval period that Harn is sort of using as its demographical basis. I've actually done a fair amount of... of college level research on that so um the the numbers here feel about right here we have the history of orball with a big chronology as usual um this history is as always fascinating and well written here are the multiple kingdoms of jara here is the avinian conquest in 640 starting in 643 um, but it looks like the kingdom really gets boiling at about 652, which is seven, uh, 68 years before the current date. If you don't know, all of the Harn products say that the date is 722's in reckoning. I'm not going to give you the details of the dating system, uh, but there is no meta plot ever that has ever advanced the timeline beyond that. That is up to you to do. That's always been the position. Um, which is a nice touch as well, if, if Metaplot is something you think you don't want to deal with. Um, here is uh, Kingdoms of Jara, and you know, sometimes 
you'll want to take this, this, I mean, I feel like this with Traveler, I want to take that setting in a different direction than the canonical direction that it went, right? And those of you familiar with the official Traveler universe will basically know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, Harn does not give you that problem. You could set a campaign in the past and do it differently if you want, but then you're kind of on your own anyway. You were going to be on your own anyway. Um, this way, you start in 720 and off you go, and nothing that they have ever published or ever will publish, apparently, is going to contradict that. So here's the Kingdom of Orbal. Here are the kings, uh, Aligar the uh, first, 692-714, so just a little while ago. Here's the Big Jaren Rebellion right here, which is mercilessly crushed, by the way. Uh, they raided the, the Meldorini city of Thay um, that... Uh, that ended in the so-called Rape of Fae, where they ravaged the town. There was a second es expedition planned, uh, but a freak storm um, scattered that second fleet. And of course, you know, Fae being part of the so-called Wizards' Kingdom, this has never really been, like, confirmed that the Wizards were responsible for the freak, freak storm, but you can certainly interpret it that way. Aligar II, 714 to present. Uh, current events. So here, this is going to describe our, our current... Uh, more a little more than a low boil uh, rebellion situation. Um, here's the royal house. Here's uh, the wives of Aligar II. He has several wives because that's a thing that Avinians do. Avinians have sort of brought the culture of Serien, the sort of Viking uh, all-father, to the island of Harn. That is a deity that, at least in that form, is pretty unique to Avinia, although there are other equivalents elsewhere on Lithia that uh, that may in fact be different aspects of Serene, but that is something that uh, there's very little material on and that you can pretty much fill that in if you, however you'd like to interpret it. Um, religion here, the primary religion of the Jaren people, on the other hand, is the religion of Ilver. Now, Ilver is the deity who is said to actually live on the island of Harn and create weird creatures to send out into the world and experience the mortal world, and then when they die, their spirits are returned to Ilver, and he creates new weird creatures to send out uh, with those souls in them. So those are the Ivashu. Um, there are a lot of the sort of prototypical stock fantasy monsters, like harpies and stuff like that, are in fact Ivashu in Harn. Um, so you kind of have a vehicle through which you can insert whatever monster you want for the most part. Uh, and the orcs, of course, from another plane, so, you know, there's precedent for that, too. Um, here's sort of the legal and economic structure. There's a thing, which is the sort of uh, assembly of notables that uh, makes certain types of decisions. Um, here is some stuff on Jaren culture, which is obviously something we need given the situation up here. Uh, clan structure, Trahain law. Uh, here's the economy. Uh, it's pretty much the kind of, kind of economy you'd expect in a place like this. Um, here's the actual economic data. I find that... This is something that a lot of settings don't really give you or give you in a very vague and hand-wavy way. I kind of like the way Harn does it because I can know, hey, you know, what is the caravan that we're guarding carrying? Well, it's carrying charcoal because that's what, you know, what's coming from the place that we're coming from and going to the place that we're going to. I have that information and can figure that out. Uh, here are the military resources. Obviously, this is not a standing army. These are sort of individual war bands. Here are the achievements of the great clans of Orval, uh, the heraldry. And, of course, they're not on the standard heater shields. There are these round sigils instead. Um, here is a big section on the Jaren resistance, uh, in which the Church of Ilver, various sects of the Church of Ilver, are pretty well entrenched. Um, here is uh, the actual heraldic dis uh, descriptions of this. Uh, of all the heraldry, using like traditional heraldic language. Um, this is the sort of uh, enfiefment chart that describes, you know, here's the stuff that's ruled by the king directly. Um, here are all the individual jarls uh, that, uh, that pay fealty to the king. Uh, and that is the tributary government system. Now we're going to get into a lengthy uh, index of the individual major settlements. Uh, along with some notable, at least a picture of some notable figure from there, uh, and the statistics on the subholdings of this area too. Uh, and if you read the descriptions here, you're going to get a lot of plot hooks. You always do. Uh, like I said, there are still a couple of uh, Jaren noblemen up here. So quite a few pages of these. Lariel, I believe, the Earl of Lariel is. Uh, is the, the, the highest Jaren nobleman remaining in Orbal. Sorry about that, had a small lighting issue, uh, which has been happening, that's something I gotta get fixed. So, 
without giving you too many details or too many spoilers here, there, this is a, a lot of uh, a lot of rich material. Uh, Earl of Sher, uh, the Jarl of Sherwin. Uh, yeah, these folks don't get along with some other folks. Run by the Ivinian Valhakar or Jarl, uh, Venril Sherwin. Uh, Sherwin is a is a Jaren name uh, that was adopted by the Ivinian uh, people that run the place. So there's a lot of these, as you can see. And there's a lot of sort of mid to small sized settlements here in Orbal uh, because it's of the major kingdoms, it's the most thinly populated. Uh, here is, uh, so we have 62 pages, uh, I'm happy to say, uh, on the, the kingdom of Orbal. And now we get into Geldheim, the capital, or, or at least capital is probably the wrong word with this kind of government, but it is the royal seat of King Aligar II. Um, and we get a bunch of different uh, a bunch of different pieces of information here. We have some information more about Aligar II personally, government, military forces, law and order. Uh, Naren of Chatim, the son of a lexigrapher from Thay. That's interesting. Uh, and of course, what was it seven hundred twenty-two people at this place? Uh, that's roughly accurate. Yeah, the the individual location article breaks that population down into Ivinians versus Jaren. So. Religion, economics. Here is the map. There is a <clears throat> pretty rudimentary keep around here, and as you can see, uh, there's not that many buildings, but those buildings that we do have uh, are described with a quality and price rating. All right, I believe I've now dealt with the problem with the lights going off by plugging them in somewhere else. Um, so uh, you know, there's uh, the individual Jaren villages that are kind of outside the town. We get some descriptions on those too. Uh, here we have the village of uh, Seath, the village of Dirth, um, and it looks like that's, those are the only ones on the map. Now we have this one up here, the village of Abaris. Um, so we get some building descriptions and uh, characters from them as well. There are floor plans here of the keep itself. Now the key to these floor plans is not, I think, might be in the book, maybe. Uh, it actually is in the back of the book. Yeah, that's the, lo uh, the local map key here. Uh, or the interior map key. You can also download that from uh, either from Drive Through RPG or directly from Columbia Games. All this stuff, if you want the electronic versions of these, this material, um, which truthfully is how I generally go nowadays, because it's just easier to keep it organized and then I can print what I need. Um, you can get that either from Drive Through or directly from Columbia. Up to you. All right, here's an excerpt from Atlas Harnica map H2. Uh, it even gives you a list of related products that uh, might be useful up in this area. Um, and here we have Geldeheim number two. Okay. Geldeheim number two, number three. I'm not sure what that page, what these page numbers are intended to reflect. But what we have here is just more detail, right? We have the Temple of Agric. Which is probably not super popular up here, but it's not illegal either, which it is in a good chunk of Harn. Uh, the Temple of Seriene. Uh, so here's some explicit adventure hooks. The Grey Whale College of Arms, that is the Herald's College up in uh, Orbal. The ruins of what I would pronounce Anwin, and I think because it's Harn and not Wales, I think that's probably fair, but I'm I know that that is not the correct uh, Welsh pronunciation, nor am I going to step into that particular uh, sargasso sea today. Um, so we've got a, a whole bunch of additional Geldeheim stuff, and I'm just not quite sure what this notation is supposed to indicate. Uh, but in any case, um, I think what this is is actually this is probably like an extension of page 7, maybe? Something like that? I don't know. It's very interesting. All right, so here's Lariel. This is the largest settlement controlled by a Jaren noble in the entire kingdom. And I believe it is actually, it is the largest settlement in the entire kingdom as well. So you can bet that uh, there's a lot of intrigue happening at this place. Um, we get history of the place. We're already getting into individual, uh, notable individuals. Um, the usual politics, economics, and religion type stuff. Here is the uh, the map. 
I've always loved these local maps for Harn because they're rich in detail and uh, once you start understanding what all the, the, the terrain symbols are, there's a lot of information packed in here. Same as, as the regional map, which I think is probably worth its own video at some point. Um, once again, we have a bunch of different uh, buildings here. This building that we are looking at, this is the castle itself, and we get floor plans of that, uh, including upper level floor plans, which is mostly roof. Uh, here's an excerpt from Atlas Harnica Map H3, and again, list of related products. Uh, we are getting supplemental, Here's and here's the player map, right? So this is basically the same map without the key on it. Um, so this, you can print, you know, print this or copy it or whatever and give that to your players. Uh, so here's more, uh, more information, supplementary information for Lariel. Uh, the Temple of Sudelrin. This is the Ivinian Order of Sudelrin, the Bearer of Loam. And the Ivinian Orders are really neat. They're super mystical. Um, if, if Ilver is a weird deity in, to begin with, um, and that is fully borne out by all the weird stuff. And of course, the, uh... It, this being Orbal, after all, some of these Ilviran sects are deeply tied into Jaren resistance movements. Um, here is Lorcan. I believe this uh, individual is a direct vassal of the king, if I'm not mistaken. I might be. Uh, but again, we have uh, there's a mysterious specter haunting Lorcan, for example. Here's the map of that. And again, uh, individual building descriptions, qualities price levels and all that stuff and there's a in the key there's a like the, the general harn key uh there's an explanation of you know what high prices or or middle quality actually means here's another excerpt from sarnica maps i don't want to uh like bend the um the spine of this back too back too much in case columbia wants us, me to send this to somebody else um here's the anoth delta this is a largely uncharted wilderness in northeastern har now if we were doing this electronically i could show you that on the map but i don't have the map with me or in front of me right now um so there's all kinds of detail here of nearby areas and historical figures here's gadon uh gadon is super interesting actually this is an earthmaster site located up here in orbal or near orbal anyway and you can see it's pretty much wilderness uh, but there's some Earthmaster ruins here. Uh, there's some and, and some Gargoon. So there's that. Here's the Order of Cookline Wheelwright. That is another of the weird clerical orders of Ilvir. Uh, they have an underground temple at the uh, the Earthmaster site here. Um, here's the Angisa. That's worth a read that I'm not going to spoil. Uh, once again, um, we've got the underground complex. Some individual characters. Uh, some explicit adventure hooks. Uh, it's great that these are here, but I mean, I think I feel like just the the way that that the the current situations have been constructed and described in so many of these articles are so rich in adventure hooks. Anyway, these are nice to have, but you know, you can absolutely just read one of these articles and and come up with things to do there. So uh, nice looking book. Um, this is the the very fancy hardcover Kingdom of Orball Kingdom module. Please do give this a look if you are interested, uh, particularly if you're you know doing the whole collect them all thing. This I believe is fourth in the series of Harn Kingdom hardcovers. Uh, once again, there is a link in the video description. Thanks to Columbia Games for giving me an early look at this beauty, and uh, thanks to you for watching. I'd like to give a special shout out to the patrons of Ardwolf's Lair, without whom it would be very very difficult to get any of this actually accomplished. So thank you, patron. And thank you for watching, and until next time, happy gaming.